Restoration, healing, deliverance, testimonies with Dr. Jesus in action. You are watching Hour of Testimonies with Apostle Chibuzo Ochinyere, General Overseer, OPM Worldwide. When you climb up on that hill. Dr. Jesus in action. God is here. Really, God is here. My name is Chia Makachuko. I came to OPM last two months, being August. Second last August. two months? Yes, sir. She came to OPM last two months and she testified today. Look at, look at the, look at people who just come last month, two months ago, last week, and they are testifying. Today, you are going to testify. Yeah. Eh? Before I came, I was in distress. I was in distress. Yes. This thing has been tormenting me from 2007. It now came up through dream. Before then, there was nothing like dream. And physically, I was observing those things, a lot of difficulties. I would be in my dream. A lot of wrong, wrong things. Going to streams, mountains, climbing big trees, not being able to come down. Trying to cross a road, the road will block. Trying to climb somewhere and I will fall down. A lot of things like that. A lot of it was so devastating, so frustrating that I let I went through a lot of deliverances. So many good churches, all to no avail. So I became. I now had a spiritual fatigue. I started staying at home. Sometimes I will go to church. Some other times I will not go. Until. That August, a friend talked me into coming to OPM. Actually, I knew about OPM, but I have not been moved to come. So when she told me, I told her that I needed only the mercy prayer, that I don't want to go all those midnight, that there is no strength. I don't have any strength to stand or to pray or to do anything. But to God be the glory. After much, much, I picked courage and I came. As I came here, I decided to take Assignments on family deliverance because I knew it was coming from my foundation. I knew. So, to God be the glory. Where I got the strength, I don't know. I did that prayer. If you see me during that prayer, I was like a wounded lion. Within that period, for the first time, my sister that was sleeping with me first got a revelation for me. Then secondly, I saw myself in a dream facing this battle because other times i will go to deliverance they will tell me i will see something in the dream after much more so but this time i saw myself with gang up of people they are all women immediately i was with one suddenly that place became a pit i saw mm -hmm. myself out of the pit Mom, and today you shall come out from every pit <laughs> uh -huh. secondly i tried to walk towards my left side I saw a very long canal separating me and the next person. She mm. couldn't get me. Mm. I turned my eye towards this way. Mm. I saw two people. All these people, they all had weapons. No way. And I looked this way. And I looked this way. I saw another one. No way to go. They were all surrounding me. And they were seeing me. Suddenly, and it looked as if they are not seeing me again. One appeared, just like the way Daddy is standing. One appeared with a weapon. And she was to give them information. They, I was seeing them, but they were not seeing me. So she was to tell them that, look at where she was. I turned my back. I collected her weapon from her. I tried to kill her, trying to see if she would shut up. She didn't want to shut up. Then I had to kill her without weapon. She died, and I left. I got my victory. It didn't end there. When I was passing through all those uh, frustrations, within, uh, within this year, uh, eating in the dream entered. If you see me eating in the dream, I will be so relaxed. Eating. Me that cannot eat normally somebody's food. You will see me in the dream. Relaxing and eating it. So it was so frustrating to me. And to God be the glory. When I was undergoing that prayer, I ate one day. I got up and said, no, it cannot happen again. 
So I got up, I prayed, I took Dr. Jesus' oil and blood, I, oil and water, I took them. After a day or two, I saw myself somewhere, like a church, they were preaching. Hmm. Everything I have taken from the one, I vomited all. Both living things, crawling things, solid things, things I don't know. All of them left my system. As I'm talking to you, I sleep with peace. That dream, I don't even, I experience it even during afternoon sleeping, even in office, even in a trance. Those kind of things, they will just come frustrate my sleep. But, but now? Now I have my peace. I am as free as air. <laughs> My head is sound. Give Every Jesus a clap of him. So Me I down. return all this glory to this God that did it for me. In Jesus' name. My name is Rotime Balogun. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Shout hallelujah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, by, by the grace of God, sir, pastor, if I have to listen to what they say, in fact, they are so unprintable, I'm not supposed to be here. If I've listened to what people say about OPM, about the apostle, I'm not supposed to be here. Uh -huh. But I want those people that are watching the television, for them to know that there is a God here and there's a man of God that still hears from God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God those of you that are here now, you are lucky you are here. But the message for those that are outside there that don't want to come and see with their own eyes. Like uh, Nat uh, Philip told Natalia, he said, come and see. They should come here and see what God is doing. It is not what they say outside there. I've been telling people after, I, I think I came here two Sundays ago. This is my, just my third Sunday. I was supposed this to. This is your third Sunday? Yes. After that uh, two Sundays, I've been telling people, my people, go there and see yourself. In fact, people that are hearing me now, they've been wondering if I am the one standing here talking today because of what they have told me about this, uh, about this place. They don't believe I can come here. But I want to say this just to the shame of the of the devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the uh, 25th to 26th, that was the first day I came here to attend, the second uh, night vigil I attended. You told us to gather in 33 and you are praying 33 prayers for us. You prayed the uh, three prayers for me, I keyed in into one. You said, I uh, will have a testimony that people will say, how did it happen within 30 days? Praise the Lord. So I came into that hour and I was praying because I have been praying for a job. God spoke about it in the past, but it has not come to pass. So on that uh, two Sundays ago that I came here, after you told us to be drinking the blood of uh, Jesus, God spoke to you expressly about me as a person. God told you that uh, there is going to be somebody that they will call for an interview by Tuesday. Do you remember, sir? Mm -hmm. Two Sundays ago, mm -hmm. that was when you spoke. Now that was my first Sunday here. So God wanted to confirm to me that uh, you are a real man of God, because praise the Lord, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I confirm that because a genuine servant of God like you has spoken concerning that in the as of July, but the date was not given. You came to confirm the. The date when I came. Somebody had prophesied. The Lord. And the thing did not happen. But another prophecy came on Sunday. And a date was given. A specific date. <laughs> eh? So I collected the. Uh, let me not waste your time. I collected the assignment. I didn't do it. Because I was waiting to hear the message by Monday. So I, I decided to suspend my, my prayer. This day till after that Tuesday that I have spoken about. The message did not come, so I decided to wait. So by Tuesday in the morning, I reminded God, I said, God, it's two days to go in September. And I know with your calendar, we are just starting September. You can still do what you spoke to your servants. That was on Tuesday morning. I've not had the message even to that point. I said, God, you can still, you can still do it. Two days is just the beginning of uh, September. By 12 in the afternoon, my wife called me. That Daddy, how is it now? It's in Abuja, why am I in Harcourt? I said I have not had any message, but I know God cannot lie because it's not a man that we that we lie. He has spoken through two servants of uh, God. I know the way they will call me. 
So he said that, but I should call the number. Uh -huh. But the mystery about the whole thing is that I don't know the person that gave them my CV. It's just it's a recruiting. Uh, it's a, they are consultants. Till tomorrow, the mystery of what they preach here is it last week. I am still waiting to know the person that gave those recruiting consultants my CV. I have not known up to now. So when God wants to work, God will perfect, will perfect it for you. Amen? So I asked them, in fact, the CV I saw with them when I got to the interview on Tuesday, it's a CV I prepared when I first finished school. When I saw it, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't know where they get that CV up to now. That CV is, is enough to disqualify me from, uh, from giving me the job. Because when I gave them my current CV, they said this one is a uh, Risha. This one is richer. They, they said this one is richer because that CV is, is enough to discolor me from getting any, any job eh? because God has spoken, God did it. So I went, I went to the interview. In fact, after I came out, I know as they have spoken, it's a settled case. Because when you attend the interview, when you pass, you will know you have, uh, you have passed. So I did very well. And then by the grace of God, this is the appointment letter for that, <laughs> for that interview. <laughs> Give Jesus a clap of it. Remember, he just came. You came when to OPM? Just uh, two Sundays ago. The same Sunday I came was when I received the, the confirmation of everything. Two Sundays ago, and now employment. Give Jesus a clap of him. I know now. Are you called your wife? Yeah. She'll be so happy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, Give Jesus a clap of him. There's no one like you. There's no one like you in our VM. OPM, Dr. Jesus in action. Dr. Jesus in action. God is here. Okay. My name is Abasema Abod Pasak, and I come from Akwa Abasibom State. Uh -huh. I am so I'm delighted to stand up in this highly exalted arena of grace. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate the pastor for what God has used him to do. I, come, I came across him in 2013 when I was in the international airport in Amokwa. I didn't get to know much about him because he did not pass through the international uh, departure. He passed through um, um, local. Um, he was going to Abuja, actually. So I did not get to know more than, about him. So on the 31st of August, barely two weeks, two months now, I saw him. No, it was on the 29th, I saw him on the television. So I tried to place my memory where I saw him. I said, I know this pastor. I, know. I remember that when I was working there, when he came across our officers, customs, immigration, other officers, they rounded him up for prayers. So it did not play to me who he was. Because if he had come through my table, I would have, known it, would have seen his passport and known his particulars. But something kept telling me that, uh, this, you know this man. You know this man. The way he preached, the way it, I said, I was, must locate this place. I must locate this place. Locate this place. So on the, um, the 30th of August, I came here. So when I came here, I was intimidated because of the crowd of uh, the, the newcomers I saw. I think that day we were up to 1,422. I was thinking within my heart, where will he get time to attend to all of us? <laughs> where? So I was disturbed. But when we came, I told us that be patient. If we only be patient, I will meet all of you. I will attend to all of you. <laughs> so I, when I approached him now, he gave me, um, he, he, he placed me on assignments. But uh, what I want to say now, before I came to the church, something that brought me to the church was sickness. My sickness was a chain sickness. A chain sickness? My chain, from one sickness to the other. Somebody can see me say, ah, but you are shining, you are shining, but you, he doesn't know inside I'm dying. <laughs> now, 2013, I had a health challenge, which I was rushed to the hospital. But when I came, I think I gave up. But when I came up, my doctor told me that I was dead. So God 
revive and sustain me. So since then, I was placed on, before that, my temperature was, I mean, my blood, blood pressure, pressure was 180 over 140. 180 over 140? So from 2013, I've been trying to bring this uh, thing down, but to no avail. But on the 31st of August, when I came here now, I met the pastor, he gave me assignment. Then the 31st of August, I started mercy prayers. Then 1st of September, I started midnight prayers, which was 21 days. So on the expiration of the 21 days, um, 20, that 21 days was Monday. So the first Sunday was 27 of that same month, September. So when I came, there was a drug, particular drug that my doctor placed on me. The doctor gave me specific instruction that I must take this drug, this medication every day until I die. That's what he put it. He said, you must take, even when I went for checkup, because I always do that, two weeks or a month, go back to him and say, ah, take my BP. My BP is normal, maybe uh, 130 over 90 or one. 20 over 80. He said, can I discontinue? He said, no, you must take it. You, must, you want to die? So when I came on the 30th of August, that day I forgot to take my drug because I was supposed to have taken it that morning before I came here. Mm -hmm. Or I, put a, I bring it inside my bag. So when I come here, when I take my breakfast, then I will take it. But when I came to Rumokoro, I'm coming from interior area. When I got to Rumokoro, I remembered so I was trying to disturb, but uh, I remember that portion of the Bible in Psalm chapter number 34, verse 19, that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. A-L-L means all. None shall be left. So I summoned my courage. I came. So behold, I came here in the morning. I sat till I saw the, the pastor around 6 o'clock. I was not disturbed. Nothing mm. happened. So mm. when I got home, I forgot about the drugs. Up till now, the following Sunday that I was fought, mm -hmm. I did not take the drug. Now, today is 11. I did not take the drug. It is 14 days now. I have not take, taken any single drug again. <laughs> Praise God. Secondly, what I bring this Dr. one... Dr. Jesus. Give Jesus a clap of him. Uh -huh. When I came that day, I bought this uh, bangle. Now I use it because from this left hand right down to my left leg, I always experience sensational heat. Like if they put paper, just paper right down or they put inside fire. But because of this thing, I don't experience that much again. Praise God. So I have See the bangle? Come. Don't buy one. Don't buy two. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son. Power! See him? Get yours. Uh -huh. So God is really here. I want to appreciate the man of God for what God is using him to do. And again, I'm so grateful because I have always, I was convinced within my spirit that one day God will give me a testimony that will Make me stand out in a crowd like this. Praise God. Give Jesus a clap of it. My name is Sister Emanuela Ajero. I'm from Owere Town. I visited OPM on the 24th of September, August. Last two years, I came here for a visit to my in-law's house. So when I came, I came to church with my in-law, with my sister. When I came here, I see crowd. I'm surprised. I asked my sister whether this thing, a human being, had been ordinary thing. I got surprised as I see crowd. I said, this thing, ordinary hand. I said, I never see this kind of crowd. So we just closed the matter like that. So because of time, I don't, I don't fit do that my assignment that time. I left after a few weeks. So this year, August 24th, I decide to come. So as I come, my sister say, I will take an assignment concerning this my body, that she's tired of this my body. Because I always complain to her that there is a woman 
in a dream that always feed me in a, a dream. So since 10 years ago, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sleeping. One old man visits me in a dream. The, woman, the man pressed me. As I wake in the morning, my chair starts to worry me. So from that day, my high blood pressure starts. High blood pressure starts. Yeah. When I go to hospital, when they check my BP, 200 and something, 170. Even that last two years where I came, I followed my sister to her girlfriend's place. I fought her from there. They carried me to the hospital. When doctor see me, doctor comes surprised. Doctor say that he never see this type of BP before. Anybody that has this type of BP, either death or stroke. So I stayed there the next day. Because of the hospital bill, they discharged me. I go. I enter my sister's house. I say, either do or died. After four days, I nearly get stroke in that house. So after all the operation, she come here and bought oil and the water for me. I, I use this uh, altar, they start to bath if I left here. So this year I decided to come. As I come, she said I should pick uh, assignment of water spirit. So I took the assignment. For three days I started that assignment. I couldn't get myself. Even because of fear, I nearly leave that assignment. The other man said, continue. So I continued the assignment. After that assignment, my sisters and my brothers, all the whole sickness this devil put inside my body for the past 10 years. Because, because of this sickness, I can't sleep in the night. All the whole stomach, they hurt me like they put hot water inside my stomach. So I dare restless. I can't rest. So but after the assignment, night, uh -huh. everything now clear. So, because of this, I'm using this opportunity to greet Apostle Chibozo Chinyere. God is using you. Now, God, do yes. I not be me? Yes. I God, know is, I God do is using you to do it. Clap for that, Lord Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in our being. Glory to God. <laughs> you just watch the testimonies of people. You are next to testify in the name of Jesus. If you have not given your life to Christ, you are missing a lot. Kneel down wherever you are. You want to surrender your life to Christ? It's easy. It's simple. Just kneel down. Let me pray with you. I repeat this after me. Father Lord, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. And I have done terrible things against you. Forgive me my sins. Remove my name from the book of death and transfer it to the book of life. I promise, starting from today, I will never go back to my old ways again in Jesus' name. It's so simple. Just lay on your chest. Let me pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you say, Lord, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn it from their wicked ways, they will lie from heaven and I'll forgive them. Say, heal the land. Heal the land of today today. Cleanse them. Wash them. Let them wait on us know. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It's, it's done. If you're sick or you need breakthrough, just lay hand on your te television screen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, by your anointing upon my life, I speak unto every affliction, every barrenness, every sickness. I cause right now to die in the name of Jesus. Leave this body, for this body is the temple of God in the name of Jesus. You, frustration, disappointment, eh, 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 Poverty right now, I command you in the name of Jesus to vacate this life now, to release the destiny now in the name of Jesus. Congratulations. So many things will begin to happen in your life. But I also, I'm also inviting you to come and see me. It's very easy. You don't need to pay money to see me. You don't need to, there's no logistics. Just come to the church. You see the address on the screen or you call me on my phone. I give an appointment. You come and you meet me. I'll give you assignment. Once I give you that assignment, you do it very well. Your story must change in the name of Jesus. God loves you. Bye-bye. Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I need you in my life.
life, Lord, I need you in my life.